Arsenal 4, Leicester 2. Why does the Emirates Stadium always have some sort of crazy drama, man? This one was crazy because first half, I was like, yo, we're cooking, you know, we'll tune all up. And then, like, all of a sudden, Saliba gives a cheap free kick in the second half, literally just as the second half started. Leicester put on, you know, a cross from the free kick. Justin's head on, you know, deflects off habits. Raya's wrong-footed and it just goes in 2-1. And you're like, oh, all right, cool. We need to go grab a third. Bro, Leicester on attack. You know, cross gets flashed in uh, from the left-hand side. Calafuri's out of position because, you know, he's been on his um, marauding runs and whatnot. Justin cuts across it and he hits a Pavard-esque finish. Post and in. It's, it, the finish is just rude. 2-2. Two, two. And then you're like, wow, 63rd minute or whatnot, you know, you you got the remainder of the game to find a, a to find a you know a winner man. This is a rescue mission. Like we just saw City drop points today against Newcastle, which are predicted to be fair. You know St James's Park is very tough to go to as a ground. You know and given the fact that City don't have Rodri De Bruyne and I felt like they struggled creatively against us. You know I felt like that would be a tough game for them for sure. So I was like, listen. In my head, I was like, yo, Arsenal, don't you dare, don't you dare drop points today at home after seeing what City just did. Don't you dare. Because, listen, importantly, we got the points and that's all great. But guess what? We're not even top of the table. City's still ahead of us, you know, by one goal due to goal difference. And if Villa and Liverpool win, they're still ahead of us. So th- this is this is it type of thing, really. A win was non-negotiable and... It, it, you know, when you're in a title race like this, especially against a juggernaut like City and you're in the Premier League, it just, like, feels as if, you know, you're always, like, I don't know, like, almost like a split second away of everything just going wrong. Do you get what I'm saying? Or a moment of brilliance. Like, you saw what Justin did. He was he was in a madness. Like, to, to strike the ball like that, like, how many times is Justin going to do that? Do you get what I'm saying? But guess what? This is the Premier League. Things happen. You got you have to account for the uh, um, unaccountables and stuff like that. Things you don't expect. Um, things just happen. This is it. And if you're lax and whatnot, you know you can get you can get bit in the backside. And today I felt like, hey, we caught life, but we don't have to do this every time. We should have made you know light work of this. Listen, we did the right thing. First half we were tuning up and whatnot, but hey. The way it ran away from us within the space of, like, you know, less than 20 second half minutes, I was like, yo, this is... When Justin scored, I I didn't even know what to say. I was like, yeah, no, no, no draw. I'm not accepting a draw today. I can't lie, the families would have gone in a meltdown. We were that close. We were that close. Obviously, you know, Trossard ended up, you know, getting a deflected uh, goal from, you know, Saka set piece. (laughs) And at that point, we're like, yes, yeah, three two, closing the game out. Then Havertz, you know, bundles one in, four two, and we close the game out. But yeah, man, it's it wasn't one for the faint hearted, and we were living dangerously. But listen, we got the points, and that's what matters most. But there's still a lot to improve on for sure. And yeah, we'll we'll go into you know the nitty gritty. I've heard a lot of talk this week about Arsenal's dark arts, Arsenal's dark arts. Listen, is I mean, I guess you could say it's game management. Um, <laughs> to be fair, no, today I saw not just Arsenal, different team. I saw Leicester try to do it. I saw Newcastle do it just in different ways, you know, whether it's kicking the ball out or, you know, making a foul when you're already booked and whatnot and referees giving you a pass by. Listen, I saw a lot of it. I saw a lot of it, so... Listen, everything Arsenal does is, you know, the scrutiny is always extra. And listen, because we're a big football club, that's just something we're going to have to live with. Like, we we remember, you know, because of the fact that we were swiping teams on the floor in the early 2000s, late 90s. You know, there's still a better taste <laughs> in the mouth of certain ex-pros um, and whatnot. But yeah, man, listen, <laughs> we do our dark cuts when we need to do it. Other teams do it too. It's not... Is not something that's you know, just you know Arsenal based. Like this is this happens across football, but you know 
the way the whole team has been villainized this week has been, uh, for me, OD. Just overdoing it type of thing, really and truly. And, yeah, man, when it was 2-2 during this game, I saw Leicester exercising a bit of it. And I was like, you know, they've come to the Emirates. They haven't won a game in the Prem. They're trying to take a point. Fair play to them. I mean, like, you can't complain. We ended up getting a win. First and foremost, I mean, we started on fire. Like, we started on fire. Martinelli had this chance early and... Yeah, he didn't get on target. I was disappointed, but I was like, you know what? Martinelli's, you know, performed good in the last couple of games against Spurs and City, where he put in a crazy shift. So I was like, if there's any day we need Martinelli to bag, it's today at home against a newly promoted side. Let's get him a goal. And, you know, sometimes you can miss a chance, feel sorry for yourself and whatnot, but he kept putting himself in a position, you know, and he was one of our more dangerous players. For the Martinelli goal, what was encouraging? Yeah, that Saka Timba connection is growing, man. It's growing, man. Children of God, you know, Saka, God's child in that Timba. Hey, <laughs> man of the Bible with the Bible quote, shout out Timba. You get what I'm saying? Keep keep doing your thing. We got to praise God, you know it. But yeah, man, lovely connection on the right hand side. Saka, you know, plays Timba through. And, you know, at this point, I'm thinking. You know, just just hit a low cross because we've been we've been trying to do these aerial balls, but I'm like the only one really that attacks the ball within the box in those situations is Havertz. Boy, did Timber mix up? Hits the low cross. Look how it evades the Leicester players. L listen, sometimes you gotta mix it up. Like, look, these centre backs they're looking forward to just heading balls away and everything. But listen, low cross caught them off guard. This one skips past Havertz, falls to Martinelli who sweeps it into the you know the far corner. And listen, there's not a lot of pace on it, but the accuracy is perfect. And Martinelli gets his goal. I'm like, yeah, we got we got our Gabby Gabby Martinelli back because listen, he needed that for his confidence. He's you know worked really hard the past couple of weeks, but as an attacker, you always want to get the goal, man. And listen, Martinelli's under so much pressure. He's got Trossard vying for his position. Well, to be fair, because of the fact that you know got Odegaard's been out uh, recently, they've been playing together. But listen. Nonetheless, he's been having Trossard vying for his position. Sterling's just come in. Sterling's vying for his position. Got a goal and an assist uh, midweek. So, listen, Martinelli's under a lot of pressure. He's under a lot of pressure. And, listen, for him to get the goal, way off his shoulder, man. The opener gets Leicester. Yeah, and, I mean, further on, like, in the first half, we were attacking. We Leic Leicester were pending, you know, their half. They couldn't, they couldn't do anything. It was crazy. Look how many players... Look how many players is around the box. We were attacking with force. And once again, Martinelli on the left-hand side. You see Trossard in that great position, you know. He's always got a knack of being in the right place at the right time. And listen, that's not a mistake. He knows where to position himself in the box, you know, to, to pounce on opportunities. Martinelli finds Trossard with the pass and the finish. It's a beautiful finish that Trossard just guides into the bottom corner. Super accurate. You know, keeper's not got a chance of saving that. But to be fair, yeah, Leicester's keeper wasn't a mad one today. He was really good, to be fair. But this one, yeah, Trossard made it 2-0. And I was like, all right, cool. Big up Trossard. Trossard, you know, um, obviously had a suspension. So missed the midweek game against Bolton. And a lot of fans were asking for Nwanieri to start. Is Nwanieri ready to start? Yeah, he is. But does he have to start? Not necessarily. Trust has done a lot for this team. And, you know, to be fair, past couple of games, I mean, Spurs away, City away. Let's see how he does against Leicester at home, you know. And he did his thing today. Got his goal. Fantastic finish and everything. When there, he also had a great cameo. But we'll get, in, we'll get on to that. But, yeah, man, listen. That's why I love having Trust in this team because he scores goals, like... Do you get what I'm saying? You need this. You need this. And he scored a goal at a crucial time just as we're getting towards half time, you know, to make it 2 0 and, you know, give Arsenal that breathing space. It's important. But, you know, sometimes it was like, yeah, 2 0 is a dangerous score line. This is what I mean by games can just turn on a sixpence. We started the second half, I'm like, all right, cool. Let's get some more goals, get Nwanieri on, get Sterling on, you know, give players rest. We got PSG uh, midweek. Bro, Saliba gives away a cheap foul. Um, as the second half starts, you know, Leicester have a corner, sorry, not a corner, a free kick. It's actually decent delivery, and Ndidi's headed it, I think, then it hit Justin, then came off Havertz, and wrong for David Wright. It was all a bit of a madness, but nonetheless, they scored straight as the second half started. And I was just like, oh, no, that's not good, is it? 
that's not good, is it? Straight as the second half started, which Steve Cooper would have been super delighted about, you know. And if ever there was a poor way to start a second half, I mean, this is it all over. Like, it was crazy. This was such an unnecessary goal to concede. Like, we literally started the second half. Like, it's a weird one. Like, we just... I don't know, man. It was, it was just poor. I expected better. Obviously, we know what our defence was capable of. And then before you know it, out of nowhere, James Justin with an absolute stunner. But guess what? These things happen in the Premier League. You know, someone might score a bang on you. It is what it is type of thing. But unfortunately, it was against us today. And I'm now looking. I'm like, 2-2. This is embarrassing. Don't you dare drop points here. After seeing what City just, you know did up at St. James's Park. You have to capitalise. You have to win. This is this is it. If you, if you don't win in this kind of situation, then when will you ever be champions? Like, come on, you have to win. Can't be lacking against Leicester. Impossible. But nonetheless, Justin smashed it in 2-2. I'm like, oh my gosh. <sighs> we got to show a heck of character to get back and it's going to be, you know, a long 30 minutes or so trying to get back into the game because you know Leicester deep block they're gonna they're gonna defend for their lives and dark hearts a bit dark hearts. I mean, a team like Leicester coming to the Emirates taking a point. I mean, as you would like, you can't really blame them type of thing. But I just knew what kind of you know finale I was gonna be in for. Yeah, I liked what kind of fury was on today in terms of the marauding runs and stuff like that. But sometimes defensively he can move a bit suspect. Um, I think he's a good defender, very good defender. Obviously, um. He's been playing centre back for Italy, and he's accustomed to that position as of now. Despite you know starting as a left back at Roma and so on and so forth, you know. But yeah, he could have been sent off. He dangled a leg like this on a yellow card. Referee gave him life. I'm not gonna lie. Two two could have been down to ten man once again. Three yellow card. I mean, sorry, three red cards within six games. And. Bro, we need to we need to get this discipline sorted. Like this is ridiculous. He really could have been sent off. Referee allowed him, but Buenonote was complaining, asking for the yellow card, and referee actually booked Buenonote. But we caught life with this one. I'm not gonna lie, but this was too close to call. I I, I can't lie. I expected the red. <laughs> you know, I expected the second yellow to come up. Oh my days! Red card once again. Gonna be the story. Arsenal dropping points again because of ten like after being two not up. But, bro, this is what I mean about the fire margins in the Premier League. On another day, that's a yellow card. Califuri sent off. You could go on to, you know, draw, lose, or still win the game. Anything can happen. But you put yourself in a much tougher position. Um, and psychologically, dropping points to Leicester after, you know, seeing what City did earlier today. It just would have been... a Massive blow, but listen, we got away with it today. We got away with it today. And Color Fury, rough diamond, rough diamond for sure. It reminds me a bit of Gabriel when he first came in terms of that, like, roughness. Um, but, you know, when you come to the Premier League and you learn how the referees move, eventually you learn how to kind of harness it. So I think you'll learn. And obviously, you know, he'll get more and more comfortable and used to the position. So don't put pressure on him. I've been happy with his cameos and... He's two starts so far, but today, in terms of the, you know, get the second yellow, equal life. But yeah, man, we move, we move, and we move. But, you know, that that's just a fine margin. We half them, path them, half them, path Corners after corners after corners. Like, it was crazy to me. But guess what? Ethan, Ethan Wanieri was the spark. He had the energy, he came off the bench. Bro, within the first minute... He 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 was on a madness. Like he just took a shot and was like, "Yeah, why not?" Obviously saved by the keeper. Um, he was doing like you know roulettes in the box. Like the technical skill was just levels. Yeah, he he added a lot. I'm telling you. So the crowd woke up finally because you know sometimes in games like this, the crowd the the crowd sorry can you know get lulled into the fact that yeah Leicester yeah expect to slap them 5-0 you know and whatnot and they don't get as pumped up for the games but guess what when it was 2-2 they knew we needed them energy was up there like I said Ethan added the energy and you felt like something was coming we kept getting corner after corner Saka with the delivery and to be fair 
Saka's kept on for corners, I think, because today he was not great. Started well in the first half, but faded, f- faded in the second half. And Martinelli got t- taken off. Um, could have been Saka, but I mean, for the corner tax, he stayed on. Good delivery, you know, Chosa knocks it in and comes off of Ndidi, I think it's an Ndidi own goal. And at this point, I don't even care. I'm like, yo, 3-2, finally we get our goal. Board, this is Bournemouth all over again type of settings. You know, Emirates sent it to Delirium. You got the flags waving and I'm just like, yeah, finally, thank God. And to, to further add insult to injury, I mean, we, we broke away in like the 99th minute. You know, Jesus, we had two options, Sterling and Havertz, these left. Decided to go alone, took it wide, dragged the shot wide. You know, a little bit of a miscommunication between, I think, Justin and their keeper and Justin pokes it, you know, and unfortunately hits have its bundles in. I mean, this is the fine margins in a Premier League. When I tell you about the fine margins, it's crazy. It's so crazy, man. And then we end up winning the game 4-2. But it wasn't an easy watch. To close it off, man, we need to have a conversation about this guy. Yeah, Ethan was moving crazy when he came on. And sometimes you need a moment to just, you know, give that spark of energy. And I felt like when he took the ball, you know, 25 yards out, was weaving in, chose to, you know, go for a long-range curler and, you know, forced the Leicester keeper into a save. All the Arsenal fans stood up and was like, yeah, yeah, we feel the energy. This, like, he added energy not only to the fans, to his teammates too, so massive credit to him. I'm telling you, not always, you know, you have to get the assist or the, you know, goal, but his energy, you know, just I feel like it just transcended onto the team and you know to the fans also gave us that belief yeah our young gun is on he's eager to prove something you know he was on the bench he didn't start you know and you know he wants to you know try and help his team win as he would and the urgency he displayed bro he was doing a madness he was driving in a box and physically he's ready I'm not gonna lie physically in terms of you know withstanding contact Against Premier League, Premier League players, he can do that at seventeen. I'm not gonna lie, like physically, the condition he's in, he can play Premier League football comfortably. I see that he is ready. He's there's no should, there's no should, um, you know, but he's ready to start based on what we've seen for sure. And listen, he helped us get that win today, so we have to big up Ethan, Ethan Ranieri for that. And like I said, he will see minutes this season, and. You know, start with a cameo here, cameo there. He will get his starts now and then. And listen, he's pushing, he's knocking on the door. He's he's showing, yeah, I can, you know, I can be the guy to bring on. You know, I can be the guy to start. Like he's showing all of those competencies. And listen, even when Odegaard comes back, that does not stop his bag in terms of, you know, when he be looked at as you know a viable option off the bench. There's games I'll tell him. I look at and be like, Odegaard, not today. Let's bring on Ranieri. Or, you know, Saka hasn't really been like it today. Let's bring on Ethan because I think this is what you need in this type of team. And, and listen, you know, he he came on and he showed his confidence, you know. I think his display against midweek gave him that kind of feeling of, yeah, like, I belong at this football club, I'm ready and I'm here to produce. And listen, his energy sent shocks away to the stadium and helped us get out the win. So we have to big up Ethan, man. And yeah, man, in the end, we get the win, but it was not easy. And this is the Premier League, welcome to the Premier League, things happen. This game was a thriller, so many different things happen. And the rival fans are watching, uh, probably turned it on. I see this, uh, it was 2-2, but hey, man, not today, not today. We ended up getting a dub, but yeah, man.